today I've been given a, a great task uh, because uh, we would like to touch base on diversity from a different perspective. Diversity can be gender diversity, uh, it can be um, uh, sexual orientation, uh, it can be related to ethnical uh, background, and most definitely, one of the form of diversity is related to those abilities which are disabilities, but are also, from our perspective, diverse abilities. Massimo uh, has, uh, is graduated from the Bocconi University Summa Cum Laude and uh, holds uh, a PhD from Pavia University and from Harvard University. He's been a quite a globetrotter, so to say, in terms of teaching. He has uh, taught pretty much uh, in, the, in the United States. He's been at the Ohio State University, um, visiting professor at New York University of Abu Dhabi. And uh, recently, after a long experience at the Columbia University, he's uh, headed back uh, to Italy, where he's now teaching at the Bocconi University um, in economics and uh, uh, political science. Let me just give you some numbers. We are you know, in economics, and you are a master of economy. Uh, what I would like to share with everyone is why we talk about uh, diverse abilities or diversity in terms of... Uh, there are, I mean, there is uh, one person who said, I choose not to place these in my abilities. And uh, the idea was to consider a different way of living life, right? At the moment, according to the World Health Organization, there are one billion people who are disabled in the world. And the number is quite impressive. If you consider that 253 million people are affected uh, by some form of visual impairment, uh, and they represent pretty much twice of Mexico's population, if you consider that 466 million of people have a, a form of hearing loss, uh, and is corresponding pretty much to the size of the European Union, and uh, 75 million people need a wheelchair on a daily basis, which is pretty much uh, twice as Canada's population, you may appreciate why we are talking of something which really matters. Technology has, a, has an interesting uh, role, not because it, it, it has been there forever, uh, for me, in fact, uh, at uh, high school, uh, and uh, beginning of, of studies at the university level, I was very much uh, using just human help and audio tapes, which no, nobody in the audience, especially millennials, knows even what audio tapes are. Uh, but because it helps understanding the, the role of technology, how uh, uh, opportunities have probably uh, changed even from the uh, time in which I started. When I started, at the uh, Bocconi University, people at the uh, National Association for the Blind would even um, be surprised that I, that I wanted to uh, entertain such a possibility, given that there were, uh, you know, protected uh, paths to being or becoming a receptionist or becoming a computer programmer or things like that. And usually university studies were uh, uh, related mostly for blind people in Italy law, uh, literature, and humanities in general. And uh, I had I encountered uh, some uh, difficulties even uh, in terms of, uh, uh, again, uh, people in the association themselves not being able to, to give me information. We'll come back to that later. Now has changed in a way that now it's much uh, uh, it's very much possible to do work both as a PhD student or even as a professor uh, uh, almost by oneself because now uh, much more uh, 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 support at the, the digital level exists for books and for, and for ability to write on the computer, math, uh, especially math texts. Uh, and so it's much more... Um, possible now than before to say I want to study at the university level economics or math or, or engineering or physics even. Um, now, of course, there will be some uh, uh, disciplines like medicine where 
where in fact you know the visual component is, is too important for for practitioner uh, for, for practice that maybe it's not yet uh, uh, a, a type of university study that a blind person for example would entertain but certainly uh, in now the limits are are much uh, uh, less than than before the technology now allows people with visual impairment uh, directly to uh, listen to all kind of texts uh, uh, directly and there is a you know there are japanese technologies that do uh, um, a pretty good job transforming a pdf into into a text file and so the limit uh, now is simply that of course such uh, automatic translations into text sometimes are imprecise when it comes to uh, uh, going from an image of an integral to how an integral is actually written in a text file so there are limitations, but much less than before. The technological change is making it more and more important that people with disability uh, uh, know that, uh, that the, the more they study, the more they develop the human capital, their human capital, the more uh, in the direction of using technology, the better. Both because uh, jobs at the high level, uh, at, at, the, at the high usage level of, of technology, are more uh, um, easily accessible for people with disability because, again, the more we work with computers, uh, uh, the easier it is to do tasks uh, from, from, from our offices, uh, et cetera. But moreover, the, uh, not doing such an investment is a, is a big problem because technological change is going in, in the direction with automation, et cetera, of potentially substituting uh, tasks uh, that are currently human, but they uh, uh, may be uh, easily replaceable by robots. And so many of the tasks of protected jobs, for example, for some classes of disabilities, are jobs of, of which there would be uh, uh, less uh, supply in the future. I remember that uh, in one interview, you mentioned that it may be easier for a person with a visual impairment to, to apply for CERN or for the NASA rather than selling Hoover door to door. I remember this because it was kind of funny, right? But it gives a sense that the gap is really related also to the personal condition. I mean, uh, does it mean that it's, uh, it can be a double barrier if you have a disability and a problem in terms of poverty rather than if you can access uh, easily to education and to different paths. Uh. Think about it, Hoover, selling Hoover door-to-door -door requires uh, 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 physical, uh, uh, overcoming physical obstacles like going up the stairs, which are more difficult to, uh, 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 to overcome with technology, right? So technology doesn't help very much when you have to go to the third floor of, a, of an apartment building to propose uh, to sell uh, something, right? So that is what's just a funny example. The gap is going down for at the high level and it remaining constant at the low level. The problem is that at the low level, the gap is remaining constant, but the replaceability of, that, of those jobs is what makes those jobs less likely to be available. The cost of being quote unquote lazy or, or, or having fear to entertain complicated paths of studies, that cost is too high. The task for people with disabilities is not to be uh, disabled in spirit, like uh, Hawking would say, and actually uh, go with much more uh, courage towards the, the most difficult uh, mathematically and technologically uh, types of preparation, because that is where the gap is becoming smaller. Uh, the European Parliament reported that uh, uh, one out of six people under, uh, f from 15 and above uh, is disabled in the United in, in, in the U European uh, area, and uh, that one out of two is uh, unemployed, which means uh, the access. And for unemployment, we refer to those people who can actually work who have the possibility and the capability to work, which means that, you know, if you consider the, you know, the net versus the gross of those people who cannot even work, one out of two is huge. 
In this uh, number, 29% uh, of women who have disabilities uh, are, are under the level of poverty, and 27-28% uh, of men are in the same situation. Information is very important on both the demand and supply side, right? So for a person with disability who is, for example, uh, thinking about which path, which career path to follow, it would be important to have information about uh, what is available, what type of, of, of accommodations exist at different uh, uh, universities, and what type of, of uh, role model to have. So have, actually having information about uh, uh, which types of jobs people with disabilities uh, have in, in the whole world would give the, the scope, would give the, uh, the span of the whole uh, possible set of opportunities. And it's very important because when you start, it's very important to have at least one case that, that could be considered as a, as a, 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 a give you see the sense of feasibility, of possibility. So in my case, I had no idea when I started the PhD in economics, I had no idea whether it would be feasible or not until someone told me that there was a PhD student from Spain who was, who was blind and who was studying at Harvard. So at that time, the information was so little that just having one example of one blind student at Harvard University made me apply to Harvard University and go there. And, and when, I, when they asked me, what, what do you need to do your studies? I said, I don't know. Uh, just give me whatever you gave to Roberto Serrano. So imagine how, mighty, how, many, how much more uh, uh, self-confidence one could have if at least could have a more, some more examples. So it would be important at the level of associations. Uh, clearly, it cannot be done at, at, at the level of each firm. Or, or perhaps not even at, at the level of each university, but it's more important that at the level of association, put together all the questions that arrive uh, uh, from, all, from everywhere and maybe every month or so, in a sort of Wikipedia style, to update the frequently asked the answers to frequently asked questions and create information hubs. according to the last gender gap report in 2021, due to the COVID situation, uh, women lost one generation. Uh, what does it mean we lost another generation? I mean, the gap between the men and women in the world, uh, even if we are, we are half of the world, but that's you know, irrelevant to what happens everywhere, it's uh, approximately 99.5 years. What does it mean? It takes 99.5 years for a woman to reach the level of uh, a man. And this is uh, general. It doesn't include uh, work situation, education, which are even worse. Now, after the COVID, this has been, uh, um, you know, is getting worse because now we are around the 136 years gap, which means we lost another generation during the COVID. And I think this is really affecting everyone as uh, diverse abilities or disabilities is affecting everyone. I think where there is inclusion, when there is, a, you mentioned, um, you know, gender, so LGBTQ and uh, all the approach, ethnical behaving, religious behaving, when there is a, 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 an approach and inclusion, I normally see that there are so uh, better results, uh, royalties for the companies and results for the organization. And I advocate strongly this change to happen as soon as possible. This is a quote that a guy, Benjamin Snow, grade eight, uh, wrote in his essay, Attitudes About People with Disabilities. And that's what he says. Disability is natural. We must stop believing that disabilities keep a person from doing something because that's not true. Having a disability doesn't stop me from doing anything. So think about a disabled person as a chef. Think about it as a chef. A chef with disabilities may have lots of difficulties in cooking a meal, reaching the, the, the some uh, uh, cabinet to find salt or salt pepper. So there could be difficulties and you have to work around them. 
But at the end of the day, the meal that the chef cooks may be excellent. And those who come to eat will not know what those difficulties were. But they may just appreciate the meal, if the meal is good. And the person with disability who made the meal will actually feel happier because the difficulties behind the production of that meal that the others didn't even see, perhaps, but were overcome. And so actually, it's not only that we can do as much, but the satisfaction and happiness of doing such things is, is very high. What I would like to see two or three years from now is that even though the number of jobs and the levels of inclusions will not, of course, reach 100%, but what we would like to see is that, well, certainly we are going from one half to at least two thirds in terms of employment of those who can, but also that the level of happiness is higher, which is not something that we can measure. And the level of happiness is not necessarily in doing more jobs, but in, uh, in, in having that level of, of, of happiness that it gives me to invite people over, cook for them, and see them eating 